All right, this is our final section about the heart, and we're going to talk about how the circulation in a fetus is different than the circulation in a postnatal human or somebody after they're born. So first of all, let's think about what's different in the fetal circulation. First of all, where is the fetus getting its oxygen from? Well, it's getting oxygen from the mother, and that oxygen needs to go from the mother's lungs, back to the mother's heart, into the mother's circulatory system, to the placenta, which is a big bed of blood vessels, primarily capillaries. And then that oxygen needs to diffuse into the fetus's capillaries on the other side of the placenta, and then go into the fetus's circulatory system. But the oxygen isn't gonna get oxygenated in the fetus's lungs. It's getting oxygenated, or the blood isn't getting oxygenated in the fetus's lungs. The blood is getting oxygenated in the mother's lungs. So we don't need all the blood to go to the fetus's lungs. The blood is getting filtered in mom's liver. The fetus's liver is still being developed. It's not ready to filter out toxins yet. So most of the filtration is going to happen in mom's liver. Again, the blood doesn't need to fully go to the liver. The nutrients are coming from the food that mom ate. So those nutrient rich things need to, need to get from the placenta directly out to the fetus's tissues. Because the needs of the fetal circulation are different. The form of the fetal circulation is also going to be different. So let's talk about the placenta and the blood vessels that connect it to the fetus's body. So this is the placenta, which is outside the body of the fetus. If I were gonna, I keep forgetting to change this. Okay, so if I were gonna draw the fetus in, okay, it would be like this. Oop, that was supposed to be legs. There's little little fetus legs. There's a big old fetus belly. And there's, yeah, that's a head. Okay, I should not do art. Anyway, this is, whoa, 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 whoa. let me get rid of that. Okay, this part here, these are the arteries and veins that go through the umbilical cord. Once this has this structure that's covered with a connective tissue, once it's left the fetus's body, it becomes the umbilical cord, okay? Inside, it is an umbilical vein and two umbilical arteries. And so this part is a big, oops, a big um, chunk of uh, capillaries where gas exchange happens and nutrient exchange happens between the fetus's blood and the mom's blood. Now remember, the blood doesn't actually mix, but the plasma is gonna travel back and forth, okay? Red blood cells are not gonna cross the placenta, they're too big, but everything in the plasma, the proteins, the nutrients, the minerals, the oxygen, the carbon dioxide, all of that is going to diffuse across the capillaries in the uh, placenta. So the umbilical vein brings the blood to the fetal system. Umbilical arteries carry blood away from the fetal system. Hang on, what? This is backwards again. Okay, remember how in the adult heart, pulmonary arteries carry deoxygenated blood away from the heart? And they're arteries because they're carrying blood that's under pressure and they're carrying blood away from the heart. That's how you remember it. Arteries carry blood away. They both start with A. Veins carry blood toward the heart. So this big blood vessel here is red because it's carrying oxygenated blood and it's the umbilical vein because it's carrying blood into the system, the fetal system and toward the fetal heart. Cool, right? This blood coming through the arteries is still under pressure from the fetal heart. And so it is being carried through arteries and there are two of them that come off of uh, iliac arteries uh, in the pelvis. Okay, so the blood comes through the umbilical vein 
and it's going to go to the inferior vena cava. That's that big blue blood vessel there. Notice it goes kind of behind the liver. This brown thing is the liver. Some of this blood wants to go to the liver, though. So there is uh, part of it goes to the liver. And then there is a vein that goes, a ductus venosus, a duct, I should say, that connects this main vein to the inferior vena cava. This is just a vein duct. It's a duct between veins, ductus venosus, okay? So most of the blood goes this way, about two-thirds. About one-third goes through this ductus venosus straight to the vena cava so it can go straight to the heart. In the heart, remember, we don't need to send all the blood to the lungs. A little bit needs to go to the lungs to help them develop, but th they're not getting oxygenated. The blood is not getting oxygenated in the lungs. So the blood comes into the right atrium, and then there is a bypass in the interatrial septum between the right atrium and the left atrium. Bypasses the pulmonary circulation completely. It's called the foramen ovale. Foramen means hole, ovale means oval shaped, so it's literally an oval shaped hole. And the foramen ovale allows some blood to pass right from the right atrium to the left atrium and then left ventricle and out to the aorta, bypassing the pulmonary circulation completely. Cool, right? Now notice we had red blood, oxygenated blood coming in from this placenta, right? But it comes in to the vena cava, which is carrying deoxygenated blood that has provided blood to the tissues of the fetal circulatory system, which is why in this diagram, the blood flowing through the heart is purple because it's a mix of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood, okay? All right, so some of the blood flows into the right ventricle, out through the pulmonary circulation, but wait, there's one more bypass, and that is this little thing here, the ductus arteriosus, which is a duct between arteries. This connects the pulmonary artery and the aorta. So again, a little more blood can bypass the pulmonary circulation and go directly out to fetal tissues, okay? And it just, these bypasses just make sure that the oxygenated blood gets to the fetal tissues more quickly, okay? So three bypasses, the ductus venosus behind the liver, foramen ovale between the atria and the ductus arteriosus between the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. Okay, now, after birth, the fetus is gonna take a breath. That's gonna change the pressure within the lungs. That change of pressure within the lungs is actually gonna change the pressure of the blood moving through these blood vessels. And that change in pressure is actually going to cause these bypasses to close. That's a physiological response that I cannot explain to you right now. It's too complicated. Just trust me, it happens. The foramen ovale closes up and becomes what we call the fossa ovalis. Fossa means indentation. So it goes from being a whole foramen to being a fossa. Ovalis just means it's the, I guess, feminine adjective, I, I don't know. The ductus arteriosus becomes a ligament, the ligamentum arteriosum that holds the pulmonary trunk to the aortic arc. The ductus venosus becomes the ligamentum venosum that holds the front of the liver to the abdominal wall. The umbilical arteries uh, become ligaments as well. The umbilical vein becomes another ligament that holds the liver to, sorry, this one holds the ligament, the liver to the arterial abdominal wall. This one holds the liver to the vena cava. Okay? So those are the difference between the fetal and postnatal circulatory systems. And yes, I want you to know all of these, but especially these three bypasses and uh, what they become in the postnatal structure. And that's the end of our heart chapter.